You're listening to episode two of Creature Cast, an NSF supported podcast about the unexpected world of animals. This episode is about what it means to be made of more than one cell. Back when we were all single celled organisms, growth was pretty straightforward. The goal was to out reproduce everyone else. Eat all the food, make more copies of yourself than anyone else, and just try to dominate your corner of the sludge. When cells started sticking together, though, and multicellularity was beginning to evolve, a lot of these tendencies had to be held back. Because if you try to out-reproduce your neighbors when you're also dependent on them for survival, you are cancer. Every time multicellularity evolved, the time it led to animals, the time it led to plants, etc., A system of divvying up jobs amongst the cells also evolved every time. You can think of a multicellular animal as a community of cells. Says Dr. Cassandra Extivore, a developmental biologist at Harvard. That all have to agree on what jobs they all have to do in order to function together. So in a normal organism, all the cells in the body have the same genes, the exact same DNA in every single cell. That's the set of genetic instructions that every cell has. All developmental biologists want to know how come cells with the same DNA can do different things. That's basically what you want to know if you're a developmental biologist. How is shape formed? Dr. Extivore studies this one type of cell that sheds a sort of interesting light on why individual cells don't fight with each other and destroy the whole organism. It's called the germ cell, and it's one of my personal favorites. Germ cells are the cells in your body that make eggs and make sperm. And the idea is that the only way that a group of cells is going to decide, if you like, to hang out together and form a multicellular organism is if they all agree that only some of them are going to have the job of reproducing and carrying on the next generation. Because if all of them wanted to do that, there's no reason that they should hang together. Once one group of cells takes responsibility for reproduction, The others are freed up to do other jobs, like digest, or move, or store energy for the rest of the creature. In many animals, it's in this very early stage when you only have maybe only 10 cells or maybe only 100 cells, when some of those cells are singled out from the others and they have to become the germline. The germ cells are set apart from the rest of the embryo so early on that there's not even a place for them to live yet and they just basically hang out together by themselves and are very uh, quiet. While the rest of the cells twist around and pinch and fold to create a body with ovaries or testes, and then the germ cells can go and live there. It just means that they migrate through the other cells. And then later on, when they grow up, when the whole embryo grows up into an animal, then they'll be making eggs and making sperm. So it seems like, in a lot of animals, there's some sort of ingredient that the mother will put into just one corner of each egg she makes. So when the egg gets fertilized, and after a few cell divisions, whichever cells in the embryo came from that corner of the egg are the only cells that have that ingredient in them. That ingredient is telling the embryo that these are the cells that will get the honor of reproducing, and that they will not die with this body but they'll get passed on to become another one. And that the rest of the cells in this embryo need to do something else with their extremely finite lives. So that's what germ cells are. This is Sophia Tintori from the Dumb Lab at Brown University. Thank you to Dr. Cassandra Extivore for chatting with me, and also to Crypticize for their song. You can find more little nuggets about animals at creaturecast.org. Thanks for listening.